Have you ever wondered how to fly for really cheap? Or maybe you've already kind of figured it out, but you're struggling with the whole process of fitting your stuff into the right size bag so that you can avoid baggage fees? Well, then stay tuned to this video because today I'm going to share with you how I found a plane ticket round trip from Atlanta, Georgia to Denver, Colorado for only $100 and how I fit all of my stuff that I needed for a one week trip with various temperatures going from 40 to 80 degrees in a personal item size bag. Before I get started, I just want to quickly remind you guys, if you love to travel, go on adventures, go hiking, or you really care about reducing your plastic waste in your regular everyday life, or just like general tips on any of these subjects, don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss a single one of my videos. First of all, I use the platform Sky Scanner, which is a travel search engine where you can find pretty much anything related to your trip, such as flights, hotels, car rentals, very similar to Expedia or Travelocity. I've mostly only used it for plane tickets myself. However, it's super simple, easy to use, and this is where I find the majority of my cheap plane tickets. Now. Any quick Google search will show you that there are certain days of the week where it's better to shop for a plane ticket and certain days of the week where it's better to fly in and out of where you're going and certain times, how many weeks before, etc. There's differing opinions. I'll let you Google search that for yourself because that's not the highlight of what we're talking about in this video. But basically, I followed the guidelines not intentionally to search for my plane ticket. So a lot of factors go into buying a cheap plane ticket and I could probably spend an entire video discussing these, but for my ticket, unintentionally, I was shopping on a Monday night. So that's not even one of the ones that they suggest. If you go to Google and you look up when is the best time to buy a plane ticket, etc. There's tons of information out there. I thought because I booked my plane ticket on a Tuesday in the afternoon which is the recommended time to look for cheap plane tickets that that would be the reason why mine was cheap but I actually started looking for these on a Monday night and it was only a week before the time that I was going so I was looking for tickets on October 1st and I just searched everywhere and Denver happened to come up as one of the options and it was for a week from that date. So, it doesn't always hold true the things that they try to teach you in these articles where they're like, book at least two weeks in advance, book on a Tuesday, book at four o'clock in the afternoon, book for a flight that leaves on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So these are not concrete rules. So my suggestion is, and this is what I usually do, is just to kind of play around with Skyscanner. Whenever you're thinking about a trip, just go check it out. See what's out there, and if you're flexible with your travel times especially, you're much more likely to come across something like this. So that's what I did, and I took advantage. Now for this video tutorial, I'm filming this on a Friday, and so I can't guarantee I'm gonna get the same results that I got when I booked my $100 plane ticket, but we're gonna try. Just to show you, on Skyscanner you can actually click everywhere. Now I was randomly searching everywhere when I was doing my search and I was doing the whole month, October, because at the time I had a free week in October, I wasn't sure what I felt like doing, blah blah blah, and it brings up a screen with a list of countries that you can choose from and the plane ticket starting price. So obviously now it's almost the end of October, we're on the 25th today when I'm shooting this, so these aren't super extensively amazingly cheap. They're not bad, but they're not like what I found when I went. So I'm just going to type in Denver, Colorado, and this is what you would do if you had a specific place in mind where you wanted to go. It's better if you don't have a specific date. That's why I search the whole month and pretty much just look at Skyscanner in my free time when I just feel like checking it out. And it so happened that I got on and look, I found some here for November. So today is 
October 25th, so it's a week before. And look at that, there's even one on a Friday, 49 bucks. So if we fly out on the 1st, come back on the 7th, $97. Round trip to Colorado. Now if you'll notice, it said 45, 45, 97, and now it's telling me 134 is the cheapest. It does occasionally do this, but usually I don't struggle with something like that. So let's go back and pick a different date just so we get a similar price to what I flew out for. So this is about two weeks from today's date, and if you'll see, it also went up. It says 107, but that's close enough. Mine's actually said 97 when I clicked on it. But I got my flight with Frontier Airlines, selected it, and then of course, there's taxes and fees. So it actually went up a little bit in price at the end of it all. Now see, if you have a Frontier Airline membership, then it will give you that cheaper price that we saw earlier, even cheaper. Round trip, you guys, $87.96. Again, I have to reiterate, this means that you are a Discount Den member. So, do keep that in mind. I was not a Discount Den member when I booked mine, however, and I still got a plane ticket for a hundred bucks. So as you can see, my plane ticket ended up being $111.60 after taxes and fees. So it wasn't exactly a hundred dollars, but still extremely cheap. As I looked closer at my reservation, I realized that my plane ticket didn't even include a carry-on size bag. Um. I'm used to flying with companies that at least include a carry-on size bag, if not a checked bag. So this was a surprise. I thought that they only did that in Europe with Ryanair. I've read a lot and been on Ryanair myself over in Italy, and I was expecting that because I heard that Ryanair charges really cheap fees, but then they charge you for all of the things that you take on the plane and other options like that. But I didn't realize we had companies like this in the States, so when I booked it, I'm thinking I get a carry-on bag, I'm gonna freaking rock this because I do know how to pack all my stuff in a carry-on size bag. Then I realized all I get is a personal item, but the whole reason that I bought this ticket was because it's so cheap. So I wasn't letting let that stop me. I didn't want to spend $50 more dollars in order to have a carry-on size bag on this flight. I wanted to fly to Colorado and back for a hundred bucks. Has this happened to any of you before where you thought you really scored a great deal oh, just to find out that you had to pay more fees in order to actually complete what you were going to do? If so, then go ahead and comment yes or no in the description below. I would love to hear if this has happened to anyone else. And now, I'm going to show you how to fit a week's worth of clothing, actually eight days, into a personal size bag. The requirements for a personal item on Frontier Airlines are 14 by 18 by 8. So I have to fit all of my stuff into that size bag. I have all of my stuff behind me. Let's get started. I want to bring three pairs of shoes. The weather's going to be between 17 and 80 degrees. And I'm planning to do mostly hiking, so I have my hiking boots in case I run into some snow. I have my trail runners because I would like the opportunity to go for a trail run or for when the snow is not on the ground, I prefer to hike in these. And I have these shoes for going out in if we go out to dinner or if I want to go dancing. Three pairs of shoes and a personal item bag. That's going to be interesting. I've got one nice shirt for going out. I'm planning to do a load of laundry during the trip. I've got one, two, three, four. Four more t-shirts and you want to dress in layers since the temperature is going to be changing so much. I've got one, two, three tank tops, a long sleeve shirt, my smart wool base layer, long sleeve and pants. I've got 
one, two, three leggings for casual wear or for hiking. A pair of pants that are comfy enough to be pajamas but also cute enough to go out dancing in if I go dancing. Got an extra layer for hiking and then if there's snow hiking I've got a pretty thick pair of pants here. I also have a couple of tank tops, this is the third one, a lightweight jacket, a flannel, and a pair of jeans for more casual wear. I always need a rain jacket for hiking, a nano puffy from Patagonia. I need this for hiking, my water bladder. My aunt and uncle fortunately have a day pack I can borrow because I don't have one the right size for climbing. Some panties, bras, couple shorts in case there's some days for running in the heat, and four sports bras because like I said, most of my days are gonna be spent being active. Then I have two pairs of sock liners and several pairs of warm socks. I also have my laptop in case I want to get some work done while I'm there, some rechargeable batteries, and a couple of books for reading on the plane or in my spare time. So all of this somehow has to fit in the bag, which is the closest I have to the size requirements. It's actually an inch smaller. This is the first time I've ever attempted to fit my stuff for an eight day trip into a personal item. I've fitted all in a carry-on size bag before, but never a personal item, so wish me luck. When you're packing for stuff like this, you wanna maximize your space. So you wanna do things like stuff socks into your shoes, wear your bulkiest clothes on the airplane, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. This is my bulkiest outfit, my pair of jeans, flannel shirt, lightweight jacket, bra, panties, tank top, and my thick hiking boots. So this is gonna be what I'm wearing on the plane so that I have more space in my back. Next, what I wanna do is stuff as much as I possibly can into my shoes because they have an empty space in them that we wanna take advantage of. big packing cube about the size of the inside of my bag that I'm bringing for my carry-on. These are lifesavers. You can fit so much stuff into this you wouldn't even imagine it. So the rest of the clothes I couldn't fit into the shoes, I'm going to stuff this as full as possible. Make sure you roll your clothes or fold them neatly in half and stuff them in like files. That's the quickest way and the most space saving way that you can fill up your packing cube. So now, I might even be able to stuff this bra into the shoes too. Now with this extra space, or my puffy jacket, or try to squeeze in the shoes into the packing cube as well. They're brand new, so I'm not worried about things getting dirty. Now that the packing cube is stuffed full to the edges, you can actually put some flat things like these thick pants on the top, and it'll still close. Like a break. 
brick of clothes. So now I'm left with my packing cube full of almost everything, my puffy jacket, my rain jacket, my stuff for the flights over there, my trail runners stuffed with socks, bladder, my books, rechargeable batteries, laptop, chargers, and the bag. Let's see if we can fit it. fit under the seat, they don't care. So the final measurements on the bag. Eight inches. I almost forgot important things. Toothbrush, deodorant. Now I'm staying at my aunt and uncle's house, so obviously I can take advantage of the fact that I know people out there. They probably already have shampoo, conditioner, moisturizer, and some hiking gear like a backpack that I can use when I get there. If I was going somewhere by myself, I'd probably invest in a backpack of the right size to use as the personal item bag. And then I would probably forego a couple more of the outfits that I brought, that I just brought because I had the space. You can tweak with this however you want to when you go on your own trips. Just kind of remember, you can always do laundry. You probably need less than you think you do. And just pack it in a packing cube and you can squeeze so much more. It ended up bothering me that it was so full and a couple inches over, including the laptop. So I decided to get rid of the dance shoes Realistically, I think I'll be too tired from hiking to go out dancing. I got rid of a t-shirt, a pair of shorts, and the snow pants. There might be some snow, but since I'm not going to be skiing and not going to be out in it, hopefully for very long, I should be fine with just regular pants. Decisions like these, what should I bring, what can I leave out, are important when you're trying to pack really light. It's totally possible. Sometimes it's really hard because you have to get over that urge to have everything you want to choose from. Realistically though, if you really want to be having a great time traveling, you're going to be spending more time out doing things than you are deciding on your outfit. So, base it off the type of trip you're doing. If you know what you're going there for, then try to pack accordingly. It's totally possible to pack in a personal item size bag. If I can do it, you can do it too, because I used to bring an entire wardrobe with me every time I traveled. I would bring the biggest suitcase you could have, 50 pounds every single time. I wanted the options. And then I realized I don't even wear all of this stuff most of the time, especially if I'm doing a themed trip like hiking. I'm gonna be repeating a lot of clothes because there's certain clothes that I really like to hike in, and if I can avoid it, I won't hike in something else. So. Make the best decision for you. You can do it. I believe in you. So just a quick recap to cover everything that we talked about today. Use Skyscanner to book your flights. Invest in a packing cube or two or three. And I will post a link in the description below to the packing cubes that I used for this video. Really ask yourself what you are going to use. 
Like I showed you at the end, I ended up taking out a couple of things so that my bag would be a little bit smaller. So always make sure you're only bringing what you need because if you're bringing extra, you might be ending up checking your bag when you get to the airport, which costs you way more than it would if you checked it online beforehand. So you might be even causing yourself worse trouble if you try to make it small, but then you can't make up your mind. So really ask yourself, am I gonna use this? Let go of being perfect. This kind of goes hand in hand with asking yourself what you need on this trip. And this is a really hard one for me because sometimes for me a vacation is actually getting to be cute because most of the time I don't prioritize makeup and really cute clothes because I'm gonna go clean houses or do something active anyways. So I'm like, what is the point? But if you're going on a trip, ask yourself what you're going on the trip for. What are you gonna be doing on the trip? What do you really need? Do you need 10 different outfits? Maybe you do, it might be important for the trip that you're going on. Do you need makeup? It depends on the trip you're going on. So just prioritize what you need and let go of being perfect. You can survive off of one color of lipstick for a week if you need makeup, you know? So just ask yourself what you need and let go of being perfect. Because you're on vacation, no one cares. Pack small items into your shoes to conserve even more space. Wear your bulkiest outfit on the airplane. And lastly, one little trick that I like to do is when I went to the airport, as you can see at the end of my video, I actually had more than one bag. But as long as it fits under the seat, they're not really gonna yell at you. So what I like to do is I put my laptop on the inside and attached it to my bag and I even had a small little satchel with me and attached that to my bag and then I took the long sleeve shirt and the jacket that I was carrying and draped them over so that it looked like I only had one bag when I was walking by the flight attendant to get on the airplane. So even though I had more than one bag, nobody said anything, I stuck it under the seat and I got to Colorado and back for a hundred bucks. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button below. And if you're enjoying my videos, make sure you subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss another one and share everything with your friends.